Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Tech It Out. I'm Nikita Singh. It's been 79 years since India became an independent, sovereign republic. This Independence Day, we tell the story of an India that leverages technology to lead in space, in business, in security, in the way we live our daily lives. This is Tech at 79, India's innovation story. India's space journey began with borrowed tech and modest goals. Today, its rise as a global space power built on indigenous innovation is remarkable. The country is soon going to conduct its first human space flight by 2027. India is also aiming to build its own space station by 2035 and send an Indian to the moon by 2040. Driving these ambitions is ISRO, the national space agency powering India's path to self-reliance in space. From rocket launches to crewed missions, this is the story of India's space independence. This year, on 25th June, Indian Air Force pilot Shubhanshu Shukla blasted off to space. He was on board Axiom Space's private mission to the International Space Station. With the successful launch, Shukla became the second Indian ever to reach space after Rakesh Sharma in 1984. Shukla led seven experiments in space, ranging from muscle regeneration to microalgae growth. Backing Shukla was India's own space agency, ISRO. The agency funded Shukla's training and space seat, spending 500 crore rupees. This was also a strategic step, providing India invaluable hands-on experience for its first indigenous human space mission, Gaganyaan. In 2024, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi named Shukla as one of the four astronauts for the Gaganyaan mission. The whole mission, after training and experience, I got the lessons I got, I got the lessons एक स्पॉन्ज की तरह मैं अब्जॉर्ब कर रहा हूं और मुझे यकीन है कि ये सारी चीजें बहुत वैल्यूएबल प्रूव होंगी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होंगी हमारे लिए जब मैं वापस आऊंगा और हम हम इन्हें इफेक्टिवली अपने मिशंस में इनके लेसंस अप्लाई कर सकेंगे और जल्दी से जल्दी उन्हें पूरा कर सकेंगे बिकॉज़ मेरे मेरे साथी जो मेरे साथ so, I think that this is a very good thing. And the same thing is that 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 the Gaganyan is scheduled to take off in the first quarter of 2027. With Gaganyan, India won't just be launching humans into space, it will be launching a new era of space self reliance. When we talk about India's incredible journey in space, one name stands out, Vikram Sarabhai. Known as the father of the Indian space program, Sarabhai's vision kick-started everything. It was under his leadership that India launched its first ever sounding rocket on November 21st, 1963 from a place called Thumba in Kerala. This historic moment marked the beginning of India's space program. Just five years later, in 1969, Sarabhai helped establish the Indian Space Research Organization, commonly known as ISRO. For ISRO, the 70s was a period of bold social experiments. From beaming educational TV to villages via American satellite to launching Aryabhatta, India's first satellite on April 19, 1975, this era proved that space technology could be used for social good. By 1980, India entered the elite club of space-faring nations with SLV-3, its first indigenous launch vehicle. This paved the way for a fully Indian space ecosystem, including the development of launch vehicles like PSLV and GSLV, and a fleet of satellites such as INSAT and IRS. The new millennium saw a series of ambitious missions. On October 22, 2008, ISRO launched Chandrayaan-1, India's first lunar mission. India has since launched two more successful lunar missions, Chandrayaan-2 in 2019 and Chandrayaan-3 in 2023, which made history with its soft landing on the Moon's South Pole. Sathyo, science or technology 
देश के उज्जवल भविष्य का आधार है इसलिए आज के इस दिन को देश हमेशा हमेशा के लिए याद रखेगा यह दिन हम सभी को एक उज्जवल भविष्य की ओर बढ़ने के लिए प्रेरित करेगा In 2014 the Mangalyaan mission made India the first country to reach Mars's orbit on its very first attempt. Today India's quest to explore our solar system continues with Aditya L1. ISRO isn't just reaching for the moon. It's reaching across the globe. From launching satellites for over 30 countries to training scientists from Asia, Africa and Latin America It has become a key player in global space collaboration. For example, a joint radar satellite with NASA will help monitor natural disasters and track climate change right down to centimeter level shift on Earth. This accomplishment is a teamwork, culmination of the teamwork of both ISRO and JPL NASA. The NASA satellite is a significant milestone for both Department of Space and NASA JPL being the first joint development project undertaken by the two major space faring nations. Then there's Megatropics and Saral Indo-friend satellites focused on climate and ocean studies. A new Earth mission Trishna is also in the works. Closer home ISRO's South Asia satellite also known as GSAT-9. is helping provide communication and disaster support to sark countries like Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka offering services like telemedicine, teleeducation and broadcasting. What's next? Apart from the 2027 Gaganyaan mission, ISRO is working on Shukrayaan, its ambitious mission to study Venus. Plans are also underway for the Bharatiya Antarik station, India's very own space station by 2035. India's Samudrayaan mission aims to send humans 6000 meters deep into the ocean, unlocking secrets of the sea. ISRO is also opening doors for private space startups, aiming to boost innovation and cut turnaround times. From humble beginnings to global recognition, ISRO's story is one of grit genius and going beyond with isro india is not just aiming for the stars it's redefining what's possible india is rapidly modernizing its military integrating some of the world's most advanced defense technologies from state of the art helicopters and indigenous deep sea vessels to precision missile systems these new capabilities are designed to strengthen the nation's security across land sea and air here's an overview of the key systems enhancing india's military prowess On July 22nd, the Indian Army received its first batch of AH-64E Apache attack helicopters from the United States. They are considered one of the most advanced combat helicopters in the world. The Apache is capable of delivering Hellfire missiles, 70mm Hydra rockets, air-to-air -air stingers, and 30mm nose-mounted chain gun with 1,200 rounds. Its 360-degree fight control radar can track up to 128 targets even in poor visibility. The helicopter uses a combination of infrared and optical sensors for long-range tracking. Moreover, it can use thermal vision and laser targeting day or night, making it an all-weather aircraft. It is also network enabled allowing the pilot to share real time battlefield data with other aircraft and ground troops. And lastly the helicopter's manned unmanned timing technology commonly known as MUMT allows the Apache to control other unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs directly from the cockpit. Interestingly the aero structures for all Apache sold globally are manufactured in India by Tata Boeing Aerospace Limited in Hyderabad. This 
will be a big boost to the army because the army aviation corps gives support to the army directly so we can see that in the future even in our uh, say our attack corps or otherwise also even in the defense these helicopters are going to be a big boost to our defense system In a big boost to India's naval prowess, last month the Indian Navy commissioned its first indigenously designed and built diving support vessel, the INS Nistar. With over 80% indigenous content, the 10,500-ton vessel is equipped for deep sea diving and submarine rescue missions up to 300 meters deep. The 118-meter-long vessel can stay at sea for over 60 days. and can accommodate a 250 strength crew the star of the state of the art saturation dive systems with its state of the art saturation dive systems and the capability to operate deep submergence rescue vessels nistar will be able to perform both diving support and submarine rescue roles with equal efficiency nistar is not just a technological asset for us but a key operational enabler Its induction will not only support the Indian Navy but will also provide critical submarine rescue support to the submarines of our regional partners. Balki hamare regional partners ki submarines ko bhi critical submarine rescue support pradan kar sakega. The INS Nistar's indigenous roots highlight the growth of India's growing underwater fleet, reducing reliance on foreign suppliers and fostering economic resilience. This year in July the Indian Army successfully used Akash Prime an updated variant of the Akash weapon system to destroy two high speed unmanned aerial targets in Ladakh Equipped with an indigenous active radio frequency or RF seeker the Akash Prime is capable of intercepting and shooting down aerial targets with precision Akash Prime has been designed specifically for high altitude and low temperature environments making it ideal for regions like Ladakh and Sikkim. The missiles have a maximum strike range of 30 kilometers and an impressive kill probability, 88% with a single missile rising to 98.5% in dual salvo mode. The Indian Defence Forces launched a series of high precision strikes under Operation Sindoor. demonstrating devastating power against Pakistan based terror groups nine targets one single message india will not hesitate to avenge the lives of people lost during the 22nd april pehlgam attack with pakistan responding to the attack the indian air force answered with one of the world's deadliest air defense systems s400 in a matter of moments the s400 locked on tracked and neutralized the incoming threat ensuring india's skies remained secure the s400 is a mobile surface to air missile system developed by russia it is considered one of the most advanced long range air defense systems in the world designed to detect track and destroy a variety of aerial threats including aircraft drones cruise missiles and ballistic missiles It can fire missiles with ranges up to 400 kilometers and at altitudes up to 13 kilometers. Its powerful radars can detect targets up to 600 kilometers away and track up to 300 targets simultaneously. Moreover, the S400 can engage up to 36 targets simultaneously. The entire system is mounted on mobile launchers allowing for rapid deployment and relocation. And lastly, the S400 can be operated autonomously or be integrated into a broader air defense network to share real-time battlefield data with other systems. In 2018, India signed a 5 billion dollar deal with Russia for 5 S400 units. And their proven performance during Operation Sindoor has now cemented their role as a critical pillar of the nation's air defense. This new era of military prowess powered by both cutting edge technology and growing indigenous innovation is shaping a stronger more resilient India ensuring that both the Indian borders and skies are secure and its interests are protected across the globe 
Freedom is hard to measure in years. In terms of innovation and the gigantic leaps in science and technology, India has come so much further than 79 years. Today we are on the verge of a new era, one that will be defined by artificial intelligence, machine learning and robotics. Technology that will amplify both our virtues and follies. AI can bring us together, not just towards cooperation, correct bias, expose injustice, if we build it that way. Technology can only help us scale our choices. It can't make them for us. On that note, from all of us at Tech It Out, a very happy Independence Day. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to Vion on YouTube. I'm Nikita Singh. Until next week, bye-bye.